Well, this project, uh, 10th Avenue, um, is a great candidate because like most city streets, it has you know a lot of patches, utility cuts throughout. So there's a lot of, for the traveling public, there's a lot of bumps, a lot of bobbles as you're driving down the road, so that's annoying. But in the structurally, you know, this section of roadway was structurally sound. You know, a lot of agencies may go in with other treatment types where they're just trying to, to seal up the surface and stretch that pavement out for a few more years. In this case, the thin overlay treatment can do that. The mix that we're utilizing is a, is a very uh, tight mix that, that seals up that surface. But at the same time, it's a very economical approach because we can go in and mill off just a little bit of that unevenness that's on the surface from patching and some of the distresses that have occurred with it being a city street and then put down that thin surfacing to seal off and return the smoothness to that pavement. Typically in pavement preservation, uh, there's no milling involved. In this case, uh, because of our application with the thin overlay, we do have the ability to go in and mill off just a little bit to help true up that surface again. So we are milling just a little bit off our surface and then returning the smoothness with our thin overlay. The thin overlay mix that's, going, that's being placed on this project, uh, one way that it differs from a lot of preservation treatments, this mix is actually an engineered mix, just like any other surface mix that a state DOT would use. We actually go into the lab, we select the aggregates based on gradations and cleanliness, uh, we put those aggregates together in a certain blend, uh, we, we run through a mix design where we select optimum AC content, we engineer the mix. It's not just uh, a maintenance mix that we pull out and throw down. So it is an engineered mix, and, and it's a mix because of its size that we can place very thin. Another side note on the production side is that we're utilizing a warm mix technology as well in this. So uh, it will have a shade of green to it as this project goes down. So we're trying to minimize uh, uh, the fumes coming off the mix by producing it at cooler temperatures. The warm mix technology that we're using also gives you an added benefit of compactability. Uh, mixes like this, especially you get into the cooler seasons, uh, cooler temperatures, it may be harder to compact, whereas the warm mix technologies help achieve compaction uh, by changing some of the uh, dynamics of the mix internally. Well, the first step after the millings and the cleanup would be the tack coat. A uh, very critical part, even with a thin overlay, maybe even more critical with thin overlays. Because we're putting down such a thin layer, uh, the potential of that layer to slip and slide. So our tack coat is very important as with any paving project, making sure we have good application, uh, good spread with that tack coat, the appropriate shot rate, uh, and that we also allow time for that tack to, to break and then cure out as that mix is placed on top of it. Well really the paving process, the actual laydown of the overlay is, is very similar to conventional paving. One caveat is that it is such a thin layer uh, care needs to be taken on the cooling. It will can tend to cool much rap, more rapidly, and so with that, the rollers you know have to be on their game and right behind the paver, making sure they can get their compaction. Uh, but as far as uh, conventional paving techniques are pro, you know are, are followed, best practices there. Um, also, in regards to uh, the joints, you know making the joints, they will probably find that with this thin mix, it's much easier to work it in around curb and gutter, manholes, working joints, because it's a smaller, tighter mix, the workability of it typically is much higher and much uh, easier to work in, especially in a city street environment. This project was selected to be done this way to, to, number one, preserve what's there. Good structure, so we want to preserve that by sealing it off. But we also wanted to uh, return a smooth ride. And we did that both with the milling, but then ultimately with the finished product, the thin overlay allows us to get a very smooth finished product so that the traveling public thinks that you address very deep issues when all we did was address the surface. And on the other side, on the other hand, a preservation treatment, typically agencies are looking for five to seven years of added life to stretch it out. We feel very strongly that this thin overlay treatment that we've done can stretch this pavement out another 10 plus years before something's needed.